This project is going to be based around a map view, asking users to add places to the map that they want to visit. To do that, we've got to place a map so it takes up the whole screen, then track its annotations, and also make sure we store whether the user is viewing one particular place details or not. And so we'll start with a full screen map view. In my case, I'll give it an initial position so it shows the whole of the UK, but of course you can change that to be your own country. So I'll add an extra import up here for uh, map kit. Uh, sometimes folks ask me, can it go here or here? Doesn't matter, do you like. I'm a big fan of doing it alphabetically, so you can see it at a glance, boom, M before S, so I put it there. Anyway, second, inside our content view, we add a property that will store our start position for the map. So we'll say we have a start position constant, which is a map camera position, which contains a region like this. And a region value needs to be an MK coordinate region like this. And it's got a few ways of making it. We're gonna use a center span option here. Let's add some line breaks, it's easy to read a little bit like that. So the center will be a CL location coordinate 2D, latitude of 56, longitude of minus three. And for the span, that's an MK coordinate span with delta being 10 and 10. And now we can go ahead and fill in the body property with a map pointed to that initial position. We can say map with initial position is our start position like that. Now, go ahead and run the app, press command R. And you're gonna see this is a plain vanilla map here. You can move it around freely. You can pinch to zoom whatever you want to, rotate it if you need to, or tilt it, it's down to you. It's all just flexible stuff, right? Now is a good time to experiment if you want different styles. For example, maybe you wanna say, I wanna have a uh, map style of hybrid. So you get uh, the satellite pictures, but also place names and roads and similar. It's down to you, it's your application, do you like? Now, all this work by itself, of course, isn't very interesting. So really, the next step is to let users tap somewhere on the map to add place marks. Previously, we used buttons for handling screen interactions like this, but in this instance, we need something different called a tap gesture. A new modifier can attach to any Swift UI view to trigger code when it's tapped by the user. Now, I put this in a nice way, uh, many, Swift UI developers dramatically overuse tap gestures and it causes all sorts of problems for users who rely on screen readers. If possible, it is almost always a better idea to use a button or one of the other built-in controls from Swift UI than to use a tap gesture. In this case, we have no choice because a tap gesture tells us where on the map the user tapped, which a button wouldn't do. So we have a tap gesture here, but generally speaking, buttons are much, much preferred if possible. Anyway, to do that, we're gonna add the modifier here to our map. We're gonna say as an on tap gesture. And this thing can be given a position of where tap took place. It doesn't have to be, but we want one here. So I'll say in our code, print tapped at, and I'll just do position. Now go ahead and run the app again. Ignore Xcode's vomit bland here, ignore that's useless. Um, I can just tap on this thing, you'll see it's telling me tap at 190.666 um, by 410. Top of the top left corner up here, you'll see that X is now 11, X is now four, uh, Y is 33, Y is minus three, whatever. You can see it's, it's correctly finding our X and Y coordinate in screen coordinates, um, and it won't interfere with the system gestures. So I can still drag around and release, I can uh, double tap to zoom in. I can pinch to zoom. Da, da, da. It's working very nicely here in terms of doing stuff. You can see that it's doing some taps. I press and hold a little bit like that. Um, but broadly speaking, you're okay to just uh, use the regular gestures as well as tap gestures. However, these screen locations aren't ideal. So we're getting screen coordinates where we are in screen space rather than map coordinates. We kind of want to know, oh yeah, you tapped on the uh, GPS coordinate for London not you tapped at 287424. That's just X and Y coordinates in your screen space. To fix this, we're gonna add a map reader view around our map. So we can convert between these two coordinate systems. And so around our map, I'm gonna place a map reader with a proxy 
coming in and then wrap that all the way around our map like so. And then in this tap gesture, this position is the screen position. Well, I could put that to be a GPS coordinate, latitude and longitude. So I'll say if let coordinate is proxy dot convert here. So you want to convert from our uh, point from local coordinate space up to uh, the actual latitude longitude space. So I'll say here convert position from the local coordinate space. If that worked, we can do tap that coordinate where latitude longitude I tap on this place. And then I run it again. Uh, I can tap on London down here and boom. That is now the correct coordinates for London. Off by a tiny amount. Obviously London is where the longitude line hits exactly zero and you find the timeline in Greenwich. That was close. <laughs> anyway, where things get interesting is how we place uh, locations on the map. Because we've bound the location of the map to its property here in our uh, content view. But we're gonna pass into the map a whole array of locations we want to show. This takes a few steps. It's like one of the basic definition of the type of locations we actually want to store when making an application in the first place. This got conformed to a few protocols. Firstly, identifiable, so we can create many location markers in our app. Second, codable, so we can load and save map data easily. And third, equatable, so we can find one particular location in an array of locations. Now in terms of data it will store, we'll give each location a name and a description, plus a latitude and longitude, so being placed on the map. We've also got to give it a unique identifier, so SwiftUI is happy to create them with dynamic data. And so we'll make a new Swift file here, pressing Command N. I'll do Swift file, and I'll call this thing location.swift, like so. And inside there's a new struct called location that conforms to codable and equatable and identifiable, like that. We need all three of these things here. Inside there, we'll say we have an ID that's a UUID. We have a name string, a description string, a latitude double, and a longitude double, like so. Now we are storing these two things separately rather than using CL location coordinate 2D because for only Apple known reasons, CL location coordinate 2D, just a pair of doubles, does not work with codable as we can't use it here. By putting it separately, we can encode and decode these things correctly. We're gonna add a little bit more to this shortly, uh, but it's enough to get us moving for now. Now we have this data type in place, we can store uh, an individual location right inside there. Buckingham Palace, wherever it is, latitude, longitude, all works here very nicely. We're gonna put these into content view as an array of places the user wants to visit. Again, we'll come back to it in a minute, but it's enough for now. So we'll say in our uh, uh, content view here, we have at state private var locations is an empty array of location. Next, we want to add location to that whenever we have this on tap gesture being triggered. So we have this code here to find the coordinate. We'll replace the print part with this. We'll make a new location, the location being ID, UID, name, new location, description, empty string. Latitude will be our coordinate latitude and longitude our coordinate longitude, like that. Now we can say our locations append that new location, like so. And finally, we can update our map inside here. So we're creating markers for each one of the locations in our array. So we're gonna to add to this a closure of code to run. That's in, that it's in one place, it looks nice and neat. Inside here, we're gonna loop over our locations array and get one location coming in. Inside here, I'll place a marker with location.name as the name of the marker. And the coordinate will be a seal location coordinate 2D, latitude, location, latitude, longitude, co uh, location, longitude. Boom. Whew. That's enough map work for now. Just press Command R. Go ahead, run your app again. 
you should find, you can still go ahead and move around much you want to, but now you can start finding places you actually want to visit. Let's say I'm a big Italian lover. Uh, I love, let's say Verona, my favorite city in all Italy. I like that, boom. Uh, I might say uh, Bologna, Bologna is very nice as well. Uh, I love the whole South Naples, I think number two. Maybe Capri's down here as well. Uh, maybe Rome. So you can start to actually mark out places you want to visit. So I know it took a fair amount of code to get set up, but at least you can see the basics of the app coming together.